Hello everyone! Today I am going to be doing a challenge run of one of my favorite games of all time, Thief the Dark Project. This is Thief Gold, the uh, version that's available on Steam. Um, if you get the game, this is probably how you'll be playing it. I made a Thief video in the past, as the people watching this undoubtedly know, and my hope in making that video was to convince some people in my life to give this game a shot, and it didn't really work. It appealed more to people who were already big fans of the Thief franchise. So I'm performing a challenge run today to give people who might be interested a more intimate look at how the game plays, maybe make it seem less intimidating. Um, because if I can do this challenge run, you can certainly do a casual run. Um, this challenge run is not going to be a Supreme Ghost. A Supreme Ghost, for those who don't know, is when you uh, go through the missions completely undetected, and leave everything exactly as you found it. That means if you so much as pick up a key, before you complete the mission, you have to put it back where you found it. That's a very cool format. It's not one that I am knowledgeable enough, well-equipped enough, or interested in doing. So instead, I'm going to be doing a no quick saves run, or an iron challenge, I guess, um, because I think quick saves kind of take away from a lot of the tension that make the Thief games so special. You know, like, if you can just quick save before you put yourself in any risky situation, and then you beans it, and you can just quick load back to, back to safety, I don't know, I don't think that's a very interesting way to play the game, and I, when I play these games casually, I usually do limited quick saves, because these missions can be very long. On casual runs, they can be up to three hours, you know, on your, at least your first time going through them before you know where things are. Um, so having to replay three hours worth of progress during a casual play session is a bit ridiculous. Um, so when I do limited quick saves, I quick save with every objective completed. This time I'm going to be going start to finish with no quick saves, um, so the tension is going to be high. I'm also imposing a restriction upon myself of no blackjack, which is the weapon used in this game for non-lethal takedowns. I'm not a big fan of non-lethal takedowns in general in stealth games, and I think Thief does it better than, say, like a Metal Gear or a Dishonored, because it doesn't give you um, the option for long-range non-lethal takedowns. You have to get up right behind them, and they have to not be alerted to your presence for you to do it. But I still think in a non-lethal run, it still is this easy option to remove all of the enemies and then just have the map all to yourself, which I think is a bit antithetical to Thief as well. You should constantly be cautious of your surroundings in a game like Thief, I think. So I'm going to be doing these one, uh, one mission at a time, um, and if I fail the mission, as I said, I go all the way back to the beginning. So I've had a little bit of practice with these first few, but things are bound to be interesting as I progress further into the game and the missions become more demanding. So without further ado, why don't we jump into the tutorial? And I'm doing the tutorial both to acclimate people who have not played this game to what it's like, and also to get that first story cinematic. And also, I think it's a great tutorial, and I want to talk about uh, what it teaches the player and what tools it kind of gives you to um, comfortably make your way through the game. I was a kid, no parents, no home, running messages and picking pockets to keep my ribs from meeting my spine. One night I saw a man, folks just passed him by like he wasn't there. I thought he must have something valuable, so I snuck up on him and made a grab. That's not for you. Please, sir, I'm hungry. Don't tell the hammers, I promise. What is your name, boy? Garrett. You have talent, lad. Let go of me, old man! To see a keeper is not an easy thing. Especially one who does not wish to be seen. We have a need for those as gifted as yourself. If you've grown tired of how you live, then follow me, and we will show you a different way. 
Leave me alone. As you wish. I caught up with him just before he vanished into the crowd. It was the beginning of a very long education. So you might have noticed a few things. Uh, the first of which being that Stephen Russell, the voice actor of our protagonist, Garrett, is an incredible voice actor. He does a great job, although it is a bit silly when um, he is directed in that sequence to portray himself, to portray Garrett as a teenager. Um, doesn't quite nail that one, but you'll notice through the rest of the game his performance is really solid, and the adult Garrett is much more in his acting wheelhouse. Um, another thing you might have noticed is that the cutscenes, the cutscene that we saw there, um, it's not so much a cinematic as it is kind of like this uh, stylized slideshow. There are a few uh, full motion cinematics in this game, but they're few and far between, and they're uh, interspersed with, you know, some of them have like silhouettes of live actors. It's quite cool, and there's um, like green screened in backgrounds in the style of Thief. I think it's really cool how the how they do the cutscenes in this game, and they're fairly sparse, only really coming up in mission briefings and uh, and story events between missions. Welcome, young Garrett. In the nearby rooms, I will instruct you in the various skills you will need to survive. Please stay in the entrance area to each room while I explain the room's purpose. When you are ready to begin your lessons, proceed down this hallway to the first room. You must learn how to move unseen. Stay in the shadows. Avoid the light. The indicator on your screen will tell you how visible you are. Try to reach the top of the platform without being seen. I think I <laughs> caused this... I caused an issue with this door right out of the gate. Um, I think it's supposed to open further, but because I was up against it, it kind of didn't open all the way. But that's fine, I can just fold over this. I've never seen that happen before, that's kind of funny. Sticking to the shadows is pretty standard for stealth games. You know, but Thief, we will find in the next room, does things a bit differently. You know, it's not just about staying in the shadows, there are other elements at play that can um, inform how you make your way through the environment, but this is pretty straightforward. As you can see at the bottom, I have a light gem that's completely dark right now, and that shows yeah, it shows how visible I am. And because it's dark, that means that I can be right here and this guy can't see me. Pretty pretty straightforward, but I think it's a cool little UI element. And I like how minimal the UI is too. It's really just my health in the bottom left and in the bottom center, that light gem. And if you equip items, you know, you'll get those in the corners, but you can close out of those and they'll close out, of, they'll close out automatically if you just leave them up for too long without using them, which I like. You know, returning to just this window through Garrett's eyes and not uh, cluttering it with unnecessary junk. Well done. I did not see you approach. Open this door to continue. When the door is near the center of your screen, it will light up, indicating that it is selected. To manipulate selected doors and other objects, use them. Good. Here's what the map looks like for this. It's, I didn't even know until now that there was a map for the training mission, but it's very straightforward. And uh, proceed down this corridor for your next test. And the way that this game does maps is very cool, but I'll just have to wait for the next mission to to get into what makes them so now interesting. Now you must learn to move quietly. Some surfaces are louder than others when walked upon, and moving quickly makes more noise than moving slowly. Listen to your own footsteps to hear how much noise you are making. The instructor will have his back turned. You must get to the top of the platform without being heard. Now this is what makes Thief unique and what makes it so special in my mind is the way that it uses sound. You might have already been uh, kind of entranced by the game's you know, amazing soundscapes, this ambient noise, maybe the sound during the cinematic. If you're not already in love with this game's sound design, you will be by the end of this playthrough, that I can guarantee you. But Garrett has footsteps on every surface that he walks on. This is metal, which makes more sound, and guards are attuned to that. Um, every footstep that you take um, can be heard in a certain radius around you. And if you step on noisy surfaces, such as metal or hardwood or, um, you know, gravel, 
then guards are more likely to hear you from further away. And the way that sound propagates in this game means that you can listen to guards walking on these surfaces to kind of clue you in to how, um, to what the environment looks like in places you can't see, such as through a door or around a corner. You know, this game doesn't give you the Assassin's Creed, you know, eagle vision or anything that lets you see through walls. No supernatural abilities here. It's not dishonored or anything like that. We really are fully reliant on our ears, and a lot of the information in this game is conveyed just through, um, just through the audio soundscapes and, and yeah, through the sound itself. Very good. I did not hear you traverse the room. Beyond this door is a hallway that will lead you to your next task. Now, uh, in this next room, I think we're going to be doing a bit of combat. Now um, get your weapons. I'll wait Put for him. Objects, <laughs> select them by centering them on screen until they light up. Then use them. Choose your weapon now. Try readying your sword and then your bow. You can always put them away again if you need your hands free. Now let's go out to the courtyard for some target practice. Before I do that, I just want to mention that um, before Thief was Thief, uh, in production it was originally called Dark Camelot, and I think it was supposed to be like this first person, you know, high fantasy, maybe dark fantasy type deal, like first person melee, kind of like a, like a For Honor or, you know, some of those other games with, you know, that are very like PvP melee focused. Um, I, and I'm kind of glad that Thief took the direction it did. I think it's much more interesting as as a stealth game, but there are remnants of Dark Camelot in this game's design, um, such as, you know, some pretty bare-bones swordplay, at least by today's standards, you know. If you can you can perform parries and whatnot, but it's, it's janky, and it was clearly an afterthought once this game really progressed um, in its development and it tr really became Thief. I think they kind of... It's kind of just this vestigial element of Dark Camelot. So I'm going to try to avoid having to use the sword and uh, and the regular bow and arrow, the regular arrows. There are elemental arrows that we'll be using later in the game, but normal arrows kill people, and I don't really want to be using those too much. Maybe I'll kill some spiders. We'll see. Ready your bow. Knock an arrow and draw back the string by holding down the attack button. Make sure you draw all the way back, or your shot will not have full power. Take aim, and when you are ready to shoot, release your attack. See if you can hit one of these targets. Good shot. Keep practicing if you wish. When you are ready to proceed, approach the training dummy and ready your sword. So arrow is pretty self-explanatory and that's gonna be um, that's gonna be critical later in the game because uh, let's just say I'll be using the bow for its many elemental arrows much more than I'll be using the sword. Swing at the target with the attack button. A quick tap will give you a slash. Move the tip of your sword to the left of the target for a left slash, and to the right of the target for a right slash. Hold the attack button down, then release for an overhead swing. Try both slashes and the overhead swing on the practice dummy. Good job. You're ready for a live opponent. To practice against your partner, enter the cobbled sparring area. Obligatory combat. This will be the only time that you see me attack a guard-type enemy. That's enough yeah, I'm done with for you. today. Please walk over to the table. Would you care for some refreshment before we move on, young Garrett? Please pick up all of the items on this table. Now, one of the cool things about Thief is uh, I picked up this apple, and I could eat it if I wanted to. I could also just put it down right over there. Pretty much anything in your inventory except for critical items can be placed back in the world, which is something that Supreme Ghosters do a lot, like I mentioned. Uh, you can't unfortunately plant an apple tree here. That would be pretty cool if you could like, you know, wait a few months in in-game time and then a tree would grow, but Cycle the technology is not there yet. To see the objects you have in your pockets. Once an object is displayed, you may use it. Have something to eat if you wish. Then you may proceed. 
The next test is waiting on the other side of the metal door. The door is locked, but the key from the table will open it. Good. Now head down this hallway to get to your next test. Something I want to mention before I leave. Um, if I had gone this way before the gate closed, there is a basketball court there that shows off this game's, uh, for the time, robust physics engine. And you can take some practice shots. I'm not interested in doing that though, you know, I want to stay immersed because I don't think basketball was invented at the time that this game takes place. I really like the uh, original textures for Thief. There are plenty of HD texture packs that can, you know, add some more detail to this, but I think the texture work is actually great and implies a lot of detail, but upon close inspection, it can be hard not to want a little more. But for me, I I care a lot about preservation and I want to experience the game as it was intended. Though I will say, um, this game does not run as intended out of the box. You know, to get it to run widescreen and various other things that, you know, bug fixes and whatnot, you need to download something called T-Fix, which I will leave a link to in the description. It's also in the description of my, uh, of my Thief video, my Thief review. Um, but I'll put it in the description of this video anyway. Um, if you installed this game on Steam, you absolutely must get T-Fix. Like, this game does not run properly without it. Um, sort of like uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I don't know if it's more likely that people will have played that game, but it's a similar kind of deal where the Steam version is just incomplete and you need to, you need to patch it to get it to run properly. If you did get this game on good old games, though, I think it comes pre-installed with T-Fix. Can't be sure, though. I, I'm running the Steam version myself. Now you will learn new movement skills. First, climb the rope by jumping onto it. Before I do this, um, I just want to mention, uh, if you've ever played Half-Life, which a lot of people have, if you are at all interested in PC gaming, you know, I think that was the second Steam game that I installed, the first being Portal, um, you'll know that the ladders in that game can be terribly risky, and you'll just detach from them with no rhyme or reason. Uh, the ladders in this game work very well, but the ropes are a bit of a nightmare, and it can be a gamble if you jump at a rope whether you will grab it or not. You know, it's very finicky about what angles it likes. Move while looking up or down to climb up or down the rope. Turn to change your facing. If you jump again, you will release the rope. Now climb the rope to get to the top of the platform. Well done. Run and jump across the gap to the other side of the stream. Good jump. <laughs> oh, that's it. I thought he was going to say more after that. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of platforming in this game. It uh, has a bit of Tomb Raider DNA in it, I think, which I like. The second game kind of took some of that out, you know, and made it much more stealth-focused. But I, I like all the platforming, and I think that element of it is kind of what... A, a part of what made the Thief formula so influential, and it kind of is... Uh, upheld by games like Dishonored that are also very platforming focused while still having all the stealth elements and stuff. This obstacle is easy to climb if you know how. First, move close to the wall. Next, jump to grab the edge of the wall and pull yourself up. Good job. I am most pleased with your progress. You have passed the last test for today. If you wish, you may stay to practice your climbing and jumping, or swimming, ducking, leaning, or crawling. When you are finished, you may return to your chambers by going through that red door. Farewell. Yeah, mantling up onto surfaces, that's, that's this game's crouch jump. Um, and equally finicky at times, although it works more than you would expect for a game this old, but it still can be a bit of a hassle. And if you've played System Shock 2, um, it runs on the same engine, so it has mantling. Yeah, if you can... If you imagine where Garrett's hands are, if he can if he can reach that surface, if he can reach that ledge, then he can climb it. You can jump at it too and mantle up, and uh, that can be very scary. And I'm going to be avoiding situations where I have to do that over um, a long fall because in the run that I'm doing, that could you know that could spell certain death and the loss of several hours of progress potentially. So now that we've done the tutorial, um, there's this faction known as the Keepers that have kind of taken Garrett under their wing. Um, but Garrett 
has used these um, these skills of you know acrobatics and and stealth for his own personal needs as well, which we're going to see in this next room here. And I really like how that's conveyed in the tutorial, um, where this last thing we do is we are taught to steal an object. I'll just I'll just show you. The keepers were training me to be one of them, but I found other uses for those skills. And any moment now, the tutorial will end. There we go. I think that's a great capstone to it. Um, you know, kind of introduces this this faction that uh, Garrett is aligned with, but then at the very end, kind of kind of shows us that's not all we're going to be doing in this game. You know, sometimes you just got to pay rent and you know steal some uh, some some wealthy nobles' trinkets and whatnot. And now that we're done with the tutorial, I promise the game will become uh, a lot more exciting. I know this was, for Thief fans, probably not the most enthralling episode, but uh, as we jump into the mission prop missions proper, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of, you know, what we all love about the Thief games and showing those who don't know anything about the Thief games, if they're still watching, um, you know, what there is to love about this game. And if at any point you see something that makes you want to play this game, I suggest you stop watching these videos and go and try it for yourself, because there really isn't anything that compares to that first playthrough. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time.